I'm reading to you today from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures. The Proverbs chapter 16. Please follow me along at the script, with the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Um, if you if we come apart, across something and you have a question about the context, pause the video and read the whole thing on your own time, the whole uh, the whole chapter or whatever. OK, follow me along. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. And besides, follow me along because this goes faster than the brain sometimes. So follow me along. All right. Kicking time today of myself first and also of you. Because today we got to talk about pride again, again. And I got to tell you, I struggle every day with pride. It's a never ending battle. It's a never ending battle. And with the things that have fallen upon us recently here, uh, very unexpected things have fallen upon us here. Um, don't know how much longer we're going to go. <laughs> but uh, we will see what happens. Oh, and by the way, my dear friend uh, from the Northwest in England, if uh, that be the case, going to give you a going away present. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 22. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Now, rightly dividing the word of truth, we do not keep our soul at all today. Okay? This was doctrinally written under the dispensation of the law. This is instruction for righteousness, okay? We keep his way, things go well with us, but we are not keeping our souls personally, okay? That's the, that's the Lord, okay? He keeps our soul today. But in this dispensation, eternal security was not there. The Holy Ghost, our, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that spirit, was not a permanent resident during this dispensation. You got to rightly divide the word of truth, okay? Let's continue. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Haughty spirit. Have you ever heard of that Irishman, um, Conor McGregor? The foul-mouthed, vile man that he is. How he does this walk thing of his in the uh, ultimate fighting thing. you ever seen that? That's a haughty spirit. Granted, it's a showmanship. He's a performer as well as a fighter who can obliterate most people, including myself. But he's got that, they call it swagger. Uh, scripture calls that a haughty spirit. Scripture calls that a haughty spirit. Pride goeth before destruction. And a haughty spirit goeth before fall. And a haughty spirit, excuse me, before a fall. See, that's why I tell you to follow me along. Okay. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly. You know, condescend the men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Okay. All right. As so many tend to put themselves up here when we ought to be the ones down there with the lowly. Okay. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. And there are many, many scriptural references that we could go to. But uh, Proverbs 3, just, just one verse. Proverbs 3, just one verse. Surely, surely he scorneth the scorners, but he giveth grace unto the lowly. Lowly. Mm-hmm. And it says, better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Mm -hmm. And also, let's continue. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. Wisely, in the fear of the Lord. You don't fly off the handle or handle things in a fleshly manner like so many people do. Okay? 
when you need proper guidance, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 3 again. Proverbs chapter 3 again. Verses 5 and 7. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, 5 on to verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? <clears throat> he that, verse 20 again, he that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and there is none good but God. Okay? And whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent. There we see again the tie-in of wisdom, which is fear of the Lord, with being prudent. Okay? And the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. And we are to speak to each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And let our speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. Not sugar. Seasoned with salt. Let our speech be, with, be always with grace, seasoned with salt. Salt Burns. You ever get to the salt in a wound? You like your cooking and do rolling meat or something? You get a little salt in a wound? It's like uh, salt burns, but salt is also a preservative. Okay. For example, remember Lot's wife, the um, remembrance of how she was turned into a pillar of salt to remind people, hey, that's Lot's wife. Hmm? Salt burns, but salt also preserves. So our speech is to be always with grace. Seasoned with salt, not sugar. Okay? Not sugar. Because too much sugar is, number one, bad for your health. And number two, it rots certain parts of you, especially your teeth. Interesting, huh? Very interesting. Yes. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Well, Brad, that's a contradiction. If we are speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, the sweetness that we are speaking is the words of the Lord, the words of Scripture, okay? But see, unto those who are without, our speech uh, with grace being seasoned with salt, okay? Seasoned with salt, which burns and preserves, okay? Burns, it's unto those who don't want to hear it, um, chafing, but unto us who are of the church of living God, it's a preservative, therefore it's sweet. It's not a contradiction, okay? Understanding, departing from evil, is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. But the instruction of fools, who say in their heart there is no God, is folly. Hmm. Hmm. And then we go to James chapter 4. James chapter 4, James 4 verses 4 on to verse 7. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You call the devices of Satan your friend, you're an enemy of God. You call uh, the television your friend. You're an enemy of God. Hmm? People out there do that. It's, it's appalling. Ah. We've talked about that before, but let's continue. Do ye think the scripture saith in thee, it saith in vain, the lowercase s, spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Okay? Lusteth to envy. Okay? Covetousness. Okay? And the Lord abhorreth the covetous. Okay? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And then there again, some of you will say, Brad, that's a, it says lowly, but there it says humble. Um, if you are with the lowly, that is humility. So the one hand washes the other. Lowly and humble. Lowly and humility. They are the two hands. They wash each other. It's a two-edged sword. See? 
It's not a contradiction with what we looked at in Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verse 34, okay? It's not a contradiction at all, okay? It's complementary, okay? Being with the lowly, you be with the lowly, that is humility, okay? And we, as the church of the living God, are, ouch, are supposed to be lowly, to be humble, We are supposed to be. But more often than not, what happens? Things go good for us for a little while. Then this gets in the way. And by our own fault, we make bad choices. And we spot out things that we shouldn't. By the way, I make no apologies for the things that have been said. As far as videos are concerned, I make no apologies. I make no apologies whatsoever, okay? But in our daily lives, you know, when it's just you, the four walls, the ceiling, and the floor, when the eyes of everyone isn't on you except the Lord and maybe those who you are in close contact with, we got to watch it. we got to watch it. Verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resisting the devil cannot be done unless you what? Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. And the longer you walk with the Lord, the easier, in theory, that ought to be. But see, it isn't as easy as people always make it out to be. You know, it isn't. It isn't. And actually, the longer we walk with the Lord, it seems the harder it gets. Because the longer you walk, the more experience you get. The more things the Lord will do through you and with you. Okay? So the longer you walk also leaves open the possibility of the more haughty one might become. And you look around, brethren, I, I've seen way too many Christians, and I'm not a Christian, but an example, way too many of these Christians who have been saved for decades, and they just seem to turn, and the longer they go, a lot of them seem to get more haughty. A lot of them seem to get more like, well, I've done this, who are you, you know? That, that bothers me. I don't want to be like that. Okay? I don't want to be like that. You know, the Lord saved me on April 28, 2008. Okay? That's when he saved me. In a bathroom. In my former employment. Okay? That's when I knew that the Lord had saved me. Okay? And um, I, 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 brethren, <laughs> I have pride. I have a pride problem. Okay? I do. I do. I have problems. I, I get bitter sometimes. Okay? And guess what? Unlike some of these perfect creatures out there, these perfect Christians, <coughs> uh, I can be a hypocrite sometimes. I can. Okay? I can. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Okay? All right? And the Lord, in his mercy, in his grace, will bring upon you things, will um, chasten you. And, you know, chastening, like it says in Hebrews, is painful at first, but it produces the peaceable fruit of righteousness. When you, when clawing and scratching, get through it, and after you've had, you know, dirt kicked on you, to remind you that you are, in fact, that dirt. You know? And, you know, brethren, one of the biggest culprits of all of this, of this veiled pride, is religion. Is religion. The Christians in their buildings. Okay? Christianity in and of itself, okay? 
But Proverbs 26 now. Go back to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 26. Lord has been humbling me lately. Because like I said, okay, I'm not, I'm not one of these perfectly sanctified creatures who put off onto you, brethren, that, you know, well, because of my longevity, I'm better than you are. And you might want to reason, it's like, well, shouldn't you be? Well, with the going through things, you get experience. Yes, yes. But see, the longer you walk, the harder it gets. Okay? Don't for one moment, okay, don't for one minuscule moment uh, fall for any of these Christians who tell you, the longer I walk with the Lord, the easier it gets. They're lying to you. That is not the case. And if they are holding to that with, you know, being haughty about it, they're in pride. Okay? The longer... I walk with the Lord, the harder it gets. You know why? Ecclesiastes 1.18 For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Talked about this in the video yesterday, which is on the backup channel. I'm going to be using the backup channel once again for a little while. That'll be in the description box for you, okay? The longer we walk with the Lord, the harder it gets, okay? But see, the harder it gets, the more dependent you become on the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, Abba Father, okay? All right? But see, if the longer you walk, the more dependent you are on yourself and on your experiences, you got a problem. Proverbs chapter 26, verses 22 on to the close. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Your God isn't your belly, is it? I hope not. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a pot shared covered with silver dross. And I like that burning lips. And James talks about how the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, and it is set on fire of hell. Okay? You know, as you haven't noticed already, that's a little sarcasm, I have a big mouth too, okay? I, I'm not afraid to speak, but sometimes I get a little too carried away. I get carried away, and I do offend some of you. Um, I make no apologies for the offense in speaking the truth, but sometimes, yes, I let myself get a little overboard. And it's in those things that I do repent of, okay? Uh, for example, calling uh, devils who are here to cause nothing but problems and division and to get people away from the Lord Jesus Christ, I call them scum. And I, I don't repent of that. I don't repent of that. I don't repent of that at all, Okay? Okay, if you're the enemy of my Lord Jesus Christ, you are my enemy. Okay, that's how that works. All right, but sometimes this mouth gets going a little bit more than it should. Okay, and for that, I, I repent. Forgive me. But when it comes to the matters of the truth, I make no repentance. I know I make no repentance, dear friend of insulting you as the devil that you are, okay? But one day, all the stuff's going to come out, and uh, then there will be no hiding behind the facade. You know what I mean? But let's continue. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him, deceiving and being deceived. He that hateth dissembleth, pull apart with his lips. Again, you cross-reference this with James chapter 3, what we're reading about, you know, burning lips and the tongue. Hmm? I'd rather, hadn't it, you know, sometimes, wouldn't it be better if someone would just sock you right in the face? Yeah, you get a shiner, but eventually that'll heal, you know? But a tongue lashing. Let's continue. 
When he speaketh fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. Like I've said to you before, I would, my, I, if I, you know, you watch a, a brother um, speaking what the Lord has given them, and they have a little fire, they spit at the camera, they lose their cool, um, I, I, I respect that. I have no trust for someone who is every single moment composed and conducted, you know. I have no Smiley Dave at Chick Publications. I don't trust that man. I don't trust that man whatsoever. Okay? I don't. All right? He is too, too happy, too go lucky, more often than not. And the only time that man that I'm aware of that he has shown any fire was some against someone who called him into question. That's the only time that he showed a little fire. And it was toward a saved brother. One who I actually do believe is saved. But just has, has to be led around. Okay? That's the only time. Okay? I don't trust people like that. And you know what? I'm going to tell you. I don't think you should either. Okay? you If you're going to watch somebody or listen to a preacher and they don't show any fire whatsoever, any, I don't think you should trust them. But then again, the opposite is true. If you have someone who only shows fire and only ah, all the time, without any civility, without any humility, there again, it's like, oh boy, oh boy. You know what I'm saying? That's why the spirit of truth, he will lead you and guide you into all truth, you know? Like I said, there are way too many of these devils out there who all the time play off as they're this meek, quiet, simple, never offensive, blah, 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 but yet on the... <laughs> whose hatred is covered by deceit, okay? You know, like I've told you, what you see is what you get out there. You know, what you see here, what you see here, that's what, this is the same person that's talking to you is the same person you're going to meet if we met personally, okay? Really is. And how many of these people out there are not like that? That they put on the facade, the show, as if they're putting on a garment, you know? God, watch out for that, brethren. Verse 27. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. You reap what you sow. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Okay? <laughs> and of course, of course, Proverbs 25, Proverbs 25, one verse. We've got a couple of one verse references here. Proverbs 25, verse 14. Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. You have, well, I have to give the tongue. Uh, you mean that jibber-jabber or actual known languages? Hmm? Hmm. I have the gift of healing. Really? Then why aren't you in a hospital healing people free of charge? Hmm? Yeah. 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 I have the gift of prophecy. Then why do your prophecies more often than not, go contrary to Scripture and very contrary to rightly dividing the word of truth. Why is that? Huh? Hmm? Boasteth of a false gift, huh? What is that verse again? 
Verse 14, whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. Hmm. Full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. You want to know what a really good one is? That you've seen the Lord. What a gift to see the Lord Jesus Christ, right? You haven't seen God, you wicked idiot. And I'm being polite when I say that. You've seen a devil. You've seen a devil. Well, okay, let's continue now. Go to Galatians. Galatians 6, just one verse. Well, like I said, we've got a couple of one verse references here. Galatians 6. Galatians 6, one verse, verse 3. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. False gift. I've done all this. Look at the work that I've done for the Lord. Well, maybe in fact you have done it. Therefore, you can get the glory. But if it was the Lord who actually did it, then you get no glory yourself. I am so untrustful of these celebrity type preachers here on YouTube and that some of you can see on the television. I do not trust them at all. I really don't. I really don't. I don't. I just, you know. <laughs> For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. We see how we aren't supposed to be, brethren. And you know what? I don't want to be like that either. And Genesis, this is something that you and I have to remember. You and I, hello me. Ow. We, I, have to remember. Okay? And some of us can say this can roll this off the tongue so easily, but we have to take it to heart. And so many of these coadjutor devils uh, portray that, but then you get them away from the limelight whose hatred is covered by deceit. And remember, a flattering mouth worketh ruin. <laughs> okay? Gen uh, Genesis chapter 18. Check this out. Check this out. Just one verse. Verse 27. Abraham, blessed Abraham, who was promised, what, the promised land, and promised of his seed, the Mashiach, okay? Verse 27 in Genesis 18. And Abraham answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Do we, do we truly understand the privilege, the grace that you and I as dust and ashes have in able to, to be approaching our Lord Jesus Christ? Hmm? Roll that around in your head a little bit today. Roll that around in your head. You know, in prayer, you might speak presumptuously or even go off on the Lord. I've done that before. So have you. If you say you haven't, I call you a liar. And your breasts stink, and I can smell it all the way over here. Okay? We're dust and ashes. We're dust and ashes. But yet, the Lord has given us the privilege grace that we don't deserve in being able to approach unto him. But yet, more often than not, we forget that we are just dust and ashes. What is man? You know, vapor, grass that withereth, you know. And Job, oh Job, oh Job. I love the book of Job. I'm going to be entering into reading the book of Job here pretty soon. But, um, and Job, the whole book.
book of Job is a beautiful correlation of the Jew with his father, our Lord Jesus Christ, our father. Especially in the latter chapters of the book of Job here. In Job 42, verses 1 on to verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything. Everything. Even that what you don't think he could do. And see, the problem is we, we get looking for the glamour and the glit, glitz kind of thing, right? But those little things that are so mighty unto the Lord that we never thought he could do or would do, he does. You know what I'm talking about, huh? Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. No thought can be withholden from thee. Not going to hide anything. Okay? The thought of foolishness is sin, remember? Okay? <laughs> yeah. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. And that you can compare with the second coming, when the Jew finally accepts their Mashiach, and then eventually the Lord comes back, second coming, okay? Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. See, it was a symbolic thing in different dispensations for humility to sprinkle dust on your head and sit amongst ashes. Okay? One of a one of the ways of showing mourning was to actually eat ashes and to bathe yourself in ashes as a sign of mourning and stuff like that. Okay? Remembering from whence you came that we are but dust and ashes. Romans 12. Romans 12. Romans 12. Romans 12, verses 3 on verse 9. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Have you ever really seriously taken the time and gone and witnessed onto these Christians in the buildings? You don't go in, but, you know, like in the parking lots and stuff like that, after they get their shot of religiosity. Have you ever done that before? Gone out passing out tracts? Willing to make yourself available to talk to these people? Have you ever done that? Hmm? Hmm? I'm telling you. A lot of the Christians that I have encountered. Now some you might well might say to me, well Brad, your attitude. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I will. Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But see, more often, of course... The fact is that you as an ambassador of Christ going on to someone that just puts on the adornment of religiosity and don't have the Lord within them truly, that alone is an offense. Especially when you ask them, Do you truly saved? Huh? You truly saved? You, you know you're going to heaven? I just believe. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you do. Thou believest there is one God. The devils also believe and tremble. Oh, oh, what? You believe in three persons, huh? Three persons? Yeah, it's one God? Oh, oy vey. You know? Religion. Christianity in these buildings especially. And the people that go therein. They themselves are some of the more arrogant people you'll ever want to meet. They really are. They really are. And those who are broken and hurting that think, because what do you think? It's like, well, okay, I got to go to a church building. No, you don't have to go to a church building. You go to the Lord. 
himself personally. You don't go to a church building. And those who go to the church buildings in that poor state, their wound is healed slightly. Well, more on that in a minute. Let's continue here in uh, Romans 12 on to verse 9 now, verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. That's right. I'm doing something, what the Lord has called me to do. Whatever the Lord has called you to do, you do that. We all have different functions, even though. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member is one of another. Having then, give, then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. And how do you prophesy today? Okay, it's not like in the Old Testament, uh, giving new revelations that are contrary to Scripture. No, prophesying today is the Lord that is in you is speaking his word onto the body of Christ. That's prophesying today. The spirits will identify. That's how that works. Okay. Or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor. Abhor is extreme hatred. Okay? Paul is telling us to hate something. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. And what is evil? What is good, right? Christianity today calls good evil and evil good. Okay? Look here on YouTube with that sow, Chloe. Okay? Calling evil good and good evil. Okay? And Christianity calls evil good and good evil. Again, you mentioned to a Christian that comes out of a building about rightly dividing the word of truth. And you you know that, hey, salvation is different within dispensation. Like I said, they look at you like you have just farted in their general direction and they think you're the heretic, but that's what the scripture tells us to do. And 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, just, just one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Okay. For who maketh thee to differ from another? Or what hast thou that or what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Now think about this. Okay. Okay, think about this. By grace we are saved through faith, and that not of ours. We're going to look at that scripture in a minute. We receive the gift of grace. And as we looked at in Romans chapter 12, he has called us unto something. We are ambassadors for Christ, having the ministry of reconciliation and having the word of reconciliation. You, I don't care who you are, you of the body of Christ and the church of the living God, the Lord has called you unto something. Okay, whatever it is. Okay, he has called you unto something. And we are to do what he has called us on to do. So we have received that from our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. But sometimes, unfortunately, what can happen in that calling, whatever he has called you individually to do, as we already look, we have different things. You can also read in what? 1 Corinthians chapter 12 yourself, okay? All right? But uh, we have different callings, okay? And we have different things. But what can happen is things could go very well for us in that calling. And then we start to pat ourselves on the head and we start to get a little prideful and then the Lord has to come around. It's like, Brad, oh! you know? Or whatever your name is. But see, we receive these things from our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. But 
Now, if we receive things from our Father who is in heaven, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, don't you think our enemies receive something from their father, the devil? Hey, Luke chapter 4, right? All this will I give thee if you fall down and worship me. All will be thine. And he shows you the world uh, in a moment of time, how on the internet and whatnot. Hmm? Uh, Judges 11. Judges 11. Check this out. Judges 11. Just one verse. Judges 11. Okay? Judges 11. Verse 24. Judges 11, verse 24. Just one verse. And this is, who is this? This is Jephthah speaking. Uh, let's read verse 23 and uh, 25. Okay, a little context. So now the Lord God of Israel hath dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And shouldest thou possess it? Wilt not thou possess that which Chemosh, thy lowercase g, God, giveth thee to possess? All this will I give you if you fall down and worship me. All will be thine. Look at all these devils here on YouTube, online, and the buildings and everything. huh? Look at what the devil has given them. Hmm? So whosoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, them will we possess. And now art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Sippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? And let's uh, read verse 26. While Israel dwelt in Hezbon and her towns, and Arar and her towns, and in all the cities that be along by the coast of Arnon, three hundred years, why therefore did ye not recover them within that time? You devils, do you not possess that which your father has given you? Because this is your time now, right? Right? And John, of course, John chapter 7, John chapter 7, verse 44, just one verse. Oh, no, not John uh, 7, excuse me. John 8, 44. John 8, 44. Ye of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. But see, the contrast is, okay? Of course, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Verses 16 on to verse 21. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift, and there is none good but God, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. And of course, as I made reference to Ephesians two, Ephesians two, verses eight on to verse ten. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 on to verse 12. If we receive the witness of men, like the witness of men that you get from the church buildings, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. And that's talking about the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? 
He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Why? Because he believeth not the record that he for because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. This is the record, the authorized version of the scriptures. Not a Bible, but the scriptures. This is the record. This is the record. Okay? And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Let's read verse 13, because here the Catholic cannot answer. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And you ask a Catholic, they know for certain that they have eternal life and are going to heaven, they cannot answer that because that's the sin of presumption. Then again, what Jesus are you believing on? Hmm? The one of the scriptures or the one in the church buildings? Hmm? Hmm? The one in the church buildings. Most of you, aren't you? Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Hmm. Jeremiah chapter 6. You know, Christianity today especially, I liken it on to a pharmaceutical drug because it is all about handling the symptoms. Not the sickness. Hmm? Think about it. Why do people go to church buildings? To belong to something. To have a fellowship with people where you can talk. They, you believe in the same God, supposedly. So you can have fellowship. And is it about the scriptures? Is it about the things that your Jesuit trained cemetery and pastor taught you? Or was speaking about? No, it's all about worldly carnal things. Okay? Church buildings are a social club, okay? But see, it's a, pharma it's a pharmacaea. It's a pharmaceutical that handles the symptoms, not the sickness. Because someone can go to a church building feeling all bogged down and depressed and then have smiley whoever uh, give them a shot in the yard. God loves you and pats you on the head as you're running off a cliff and then you go out and then a week later you got to go back and get your fix. Okay? And see, true fellowship of the brethren when they gather together, whether in someone's house or wherever, okay, that true fellowship of brethren is to learn of the scriptures, to learn of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grow in the faith, to be better witnesses, and that kind of thing. Not to bro-hug each other and have your weekly shot so that you can go through your week living as the world and go uh, go to confession, or excuse me, and go to your church building and have your Jesuit trained cemeterian pat you on the head. Okay, it, it's it's a drug. Church buildings, Christianity is likened onto a. I liken it onto a drug. Okay, because it handles what the symptom, not the sickness, and if you go there wanting to look for a cure for that sickness. Oh boy, you're in trouble. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 9 under verse 15. Thus sat the Lord of hosts. They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the basket. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. And this, the authorized version of the word, is the word of the Lord. They get a Bible like the ESV or even that grotesque message. That's not the word of the Lord. Okay, those are the words of man. Those have their root in Catholicism. Okay? All right? But the true word of the Lord, these Christians in the building have no delight in. 
Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of, you, of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the age with him that is full of days. Yes, and that wrath, which is the time of Jacob's trouble, he's not going to spare. Okay? He's not going to show respect of persons. All right? as he is no respecter of persons today. Once we get redeemed, all hell is going to break loose. And then those of you who go to the building about having to live it, you're going to have to. Or just believe so that you can take the mark of the beast and then damn yourself to hell. And their houses shall be turned on to others. Oh, like the Roman Catholic Church. With their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And the Lord abhorreth the covetous. For from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. And, verse 14, They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, peace, peace, when there was no peace. When there is no peace, excuse me. And there is no peace unto the wicked. Peace, peace. They handle just the symptom, not the sickness. They go to a church building, made to feel good about themselves, and f surrounded by smiling faces. They love Banya. Right? But verse 15, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, said the Lord. And these people in the buildings being taught to, you know, contrary to rightly dividing the word of truth, being taught that the Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for them today, okay, and that the lie of tithing, okay, and, and the list goes on and on. Don't judge people, okay? Whenever you hear someone say, don't judge, it's always, without exception, trying to defend their sin, or God knows my heart. Again, someone trying to justify themselves and their sin. Every single time without exception. Safe people don't resort to that. They don't. And Jeremiah 8, verses 8, on to verse 11. How do ye say? How do ye say? We are wise, and the law and the law of the Lord is with us. Lo, certainly in vain may he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? What wisdom is in them of these buildings? <coughs> the wisdom that cometh down from above? Or the wisdom that is what first? Earthly, sensual, and devilish. That's the wisdom that's in these church buildings. Hmm? They have rejected the word of the Lord. The buildings, they have rejected the authorized version of the scriptures. And those out there that do have the authorized version of the scriptures, hmm? they're worshipers of men. They're idol worshipers. Okay? Okay? What wisdom is in them? The wisdom of men, which is earthly, sensual, devilish. Therefore, will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For every one from the least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. For from the prophet even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. God loves you. God loves you unconditionally. Just believe. <laughs> it's not funny. 
For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Slightly. Someone goes to a church building depressed and ready to, <clears throat> or whatever, and then they get, you know, they love bomb, and they're made to feel good temporarily. They treat the symptom, not the sickness. They lie to them. God's not angry at you. You reject the gospel, God is angry at you. God's wrath is for you. Okay? Not to these Christians in the buildings, man. Not to them. Not to them. Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13. We're looking for our instruction in righteousness in the Old Testament because you are very well of Timothy. That in the last day, in the last days, perilous times shall come. You know that. You ought to know that. And even the devils know that very well. Because this is their hour in the power of darkness. But we're looking at these examples in the Old Testament that we may learn to fear the Lord. That we may get a little instruction in righteousness. Look, if you're a Christian and you're going to a building, you're in grave danger. Okay? You are. You need to get away from that. You need to separate yourself from that. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Okay? What is Christianity today is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. You need to get out of it. Ezekiel 13, verses 10 and verse 16. Because, even because, they have seduced my people, saying, peace. God loves you. He's not angry at you. He's not judging you. Come as you are. Come as you are. See, when they say come as you are, don't bother with anything about, you know, having repentance. Just come as, you know, hey, God has no requirement. See what they're saying when they say that to you. Come as you are. Come unbroken. Come without knowing that you are a sinner. Well, they say, well, you know you're a sinner. Well, yeah, I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. Without personal accountability, without brokenness. When you hear these Christians in the building say, come as you are, it's without brokenness. It's very subtle. It's very subtle. Because what? Repentance is going from unbelief to belief, right? <laughs> this week, I mean, go to the parking lot of one of these church buildings when they get out. Ask him, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Talking about the Philippian jailer. Which we talk a little bit about the video that was done yesterday. Okay? And what about repentance? You're going from unbelief to belief. <sighs> the odds are stacked against us, brethren. Let's continue, though. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> because, even because, they have seduced my people, saying, Peace. And there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Untempered mortar. Mortar that is weak, that isn't proven. You know, like you cover it over, and then it's not, it doesn't have hold, it doesn't have substance. So meaning, when a <clears throat> wind goes, it's going to knock it over. Untempered mortar. Tempered. You know, like you temper a piece of steel, untempered mortar. It's not, it won't, won't be thickened. It won't, it won't hold. Untempered mortar, which is Christianity today. Okay? Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. Pastor. Yeah? In your building, yeah? Pastor. Admin, glory, I'm the glory, I'm hey, buddy. Now, they, they, they went away if they saw anything on this. Yeah, I'm sure they did. <laughs> there shall be an overflowing shower. And ye, O great hailstones, shall fall. And a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, 
shall it not be said unto you, where is the daubing wherewith ye have daubed it? Like he says elsewhere in scripture, go, go unto the gods which you have uh, cried out to and let them rescue you. Where is all this love them into the kingdom nonsense when the wall falls flat? Where is it? It's not a gospel that saves. It's a gospel that relieves, not saves. It's a gospel that makes you feel good for a while. And then just like a pharmaceutical, pharmacaea drug, you got to go get your shot again. Well, as the church of the living God, we come together that we may go out and be witnesses. Rather than draw them in, lost people into the mist, to entertain them and make them feel good about themselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger, and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. Oh boy, buddy. This false Christianity... It's doomed to be destroyed. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered. And it's not a foundation built upon a rock, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, but a foundation built on sand. You see? And it shall fall, and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall, and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar, and will say unto you, The wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. To wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her. And there is no peace, saith the Lord God. There is no peace for you in Christianity today. None. <laughs> well, we are true Christians. And you're going to take the time to try to tell someone why we are true Christians as versus the Catholic. That comes once after they have heard the true gospel. Okay? All right? All right? It's a waste of time, dear brother, dear sister. Abandon it. Abandon it. Because everyone you're going to talk to, almost without exception, is going to either compare Christianity with Catholic or with the Joyce Meyer people. It's a waste of time. We were called, us Gentiles were called, to, uh, grafted into the tree of the Jew to make the Jew jealous. Jews are not jealous of Christianity. Do you think Jesus Christ, God, our Father, approves of what is Christianity today? No matter your flavor of it. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Micah, chapter 3. Micah chapter 3. Micah chapter 3. Come on, fingers. This, this set of scriptures is finally getting worn in. <laughs> Micah 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry, Peace! And he hath put, and he that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. And they do it in a haughty spirit. Like I said, the Christians in the church buildings, Christianity today is arrogant, haughty. And we are not supposed to be like, like, like that, brethren. Therefore night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision. And it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine. 
and the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded, yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. Yes. And in Christianity, pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty, like Conor McGregor walking, a haughty spirit before fall. Well, the people in the building, it's false humility. It's a hum humility based on puffing themselves up. Okay? And, and Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah, just two verses. Jeremiah chapter 23. Okay? Verses 21 and 22. Okay? I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. False prophets want to run to the forefront. They want everyone to look at me, look at me, look at me with all their myriads of channels or whatever their uh, promotions and whatever. It's all about them. They run. They want, to be in the, they want to be in the spotlight. I want to. Do you? I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from, their e from the evil of their doings. But no. Christianity in her haughtiness, in her arrogance, in her pride. God loves you. God's not angry at you. Just believe. First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians chapter five. As you've noticed, we've we've kind of um, gleaned a couple of topics on this. First Thessalonians chapter five. <laughs> oh, verses one on to verse eleven. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Oh, suddenly you mean the wall that was tempered with untempered mortar, or the wall that was daubed, excuse me that was daubed with untempered mortar will fall down. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. No, because this is their hour and the power of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others sleep in the church buildings. But let us watch and be sober and then not think too highly of ourselves as we ought to think. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. And unfortunately, I'm sure today with St. Patty's Day that we're going to be going to sleep tonight and we're going to hear sirens going around and check the McHenry County blotter, police blotter, and see a lot, whole lot of people who are arrested for drunk driving and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, add my joy and the glory, I'm right. Ugh. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That's talking about the redemption of the purchased possession. Because the time of Jacob's trouble is God's wrath. We are going to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. We have not been appointed to wrath. Okay. Who died for us. That whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. 
Wherefore, comfort, your, you comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. You know, brethren, when you start talking, saying that I serve the Lord Jesus Christ, the world is trained to look at you as a Christian. Okay? And when the world looks at you as a Christian, they intuit immediately one of two. Catholic or the name it and claim it idiots like uh, Copeland and whatnot. Okay? Even, even the Ruckmanites are not in that equation at the onset. Okay? They're not. Okay? It's either Catholic or the, uh, uh, the Kenneth Copeland guys, which they see on the television. Okay, some uh, morons, the Mormons, okay, or the Jehos even, okay. Remember, when you take the name Christian upon you amongst the world, that's what they're going to think immediately. And we are to be vigilant for our Lord Jesus Christ, the church of the living God. Not a title given to us of the world, which we never called ourselves. So. Brethren, let us remember. We're dirt. We're dirt. There's nothing special about us. Okay. We are. Today I'm doing better than I deserve. Because I deserve death, hell, and the grave. Even as a saved sinner, I don't deserve the least of the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ. And neither do you. We've got to remember that we are dirt, that we are dust and ashes. And who are we? But praise the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 138. Psalm 138, then we'll be done. Psalm 138. Psalm 138. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart before the little G gods, and these people who think they are gods, will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word, the authorized version, above all thy name. You can trust the authorized version of the scriptures. You can't trust the Bible. There's a difference. In the day when I cried, thou answeredest me, and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth talking about his second coming, you know, uh, he taught, you know, he speaks the sword out of his mouth, that kind of thing. And uh, during the kingdom of heaven, the kings are going to have to come and praise the Lord during the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, okay? Yea, they shall sing in the ways of, they, yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect Unto the lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. And how will he perfect us? Come up hither. Okay? Not forsaking the work of his hands. Remember, we looked at that in Ephesians. We are his workmanship. Okay? And our perfection will come when we hear come up hither and we go up together to meet the Lord in the air that we are to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That is our perfection. Do you realize that we will reach our perfection in death? Or if we are those who are alive and remain? Do you realize that? 
that's going to be it for this little video. Um, thank you for watching this if you do. Uh, thank you to the brethren who have prayed for us, who help us. And, and thank you to you brethren who pray for one another, who go out of your way to like, hey, brother, praying for you. You know, you know, just a just a rogue email. Hey, brother, I'm praying for you. Goes a long way. Or a phone call if you're able. You know, hey, brother, I know you're busy. I ain't got that much time. I love you. I'm praying for you. Or a sister. You know, hey, sister, I still think about you. I still pray for you. A little goes a long way. And we got to remember from whence we came, brethren, that we are ashes and dust. Thank you. We love you. And we will see you in the next video. Like I said, I'm going to be utilizing the backup channel again. Why not? Um, so, um, yeah, going to be utilizing the backup channel again. So uh, a couple will be on this channel and then maybe one or two on the backup channel. This week has been a very busy week. <laughs> so anyway, pray for one another. Love you. Bye-bye.